We are back for our second of probably seven preseason editions of the KSO Show. Matt Hall with Derek Young. We talked quarterbacks last week. Today, this week, we're talking running backs. D.Y., before we started, you made a smart idea. Let's put fullbacks. I was going to say, we, I was say, we made an audible like right. five seconds like, before. I think we were actually recording. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't counted down to three, two, one yet. And D.Y. says, maybe fullbacks go with tight ends. And I think that's true, you know, because they the, use them as H-backs and everything. And so that's my Messingham coaches. So let's just talk running, just tailbacks, halfbacks, running backs, whatever you want to call them. We're not talking fullbacks. Uh, as we preview the 2019 K-State season, position by position, quarterback was easy, D.Y. The starter was Skylar Thompson. We talked about Skylar Thompson for 20 minutes, and then talk about the backups a little bit, and we're good. Running back, a totally different story. We'll start. We'll start with the two grad transfers. I imagine, without putting words in your mouth, and you can disagree, should we be looking for Jordan Brown and James Gilbert to be the two guys carrying most of the load for this team? Or is even that too much to too much to assume right now? I mean, that's the only guess I have. Yeah. But that's the funny thing is, outside of a little bit here and there in spring football we haven't seen any of these guys play right <laughs> so we don't know what to expect um you would imagine you brought in two graduate transfers to play um james gilbert was here in the spring jordan brown was not jordan right. brown also missed the first summer session he arrived on july 8th for the second summer session uh i always w- was starting to resort you know back towards the middle of spring and the spring i was like even though gilbert's the one here in the spring I was like, uh, maybe Jordan Brown will start. And, yeah. and that was me trapping myself into thinking, well, he came from North Carolina and Gilbert came from Ball State, so that's all I got. I, I did the same. I mean, I think I, I expected Gilbert to be the guy in the spring. Then at Jordan Brown, looking at his sophomore numbers, particularly at North Carolina and how he was used in the passing game too, his versatility, I, I felt the same. Like if I had to bet, I would have taken Jordan Brown. But now, you know, I'm getting here not late, but a little later, not having played the spring. I can't help but wonder if James Gilbert's not going to get the first crack. And again, we're both guessing right now. Absolutely. I, uh, yeah, but I, now, I guess I'm back to thinking I'd be su- somewhat surprised, mildly surprised, if Gilbert's not the first back used. I don't know if I'd be... I'm not surprised at all, uh, probably. I, yeah. I, 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 so much of this is a mystery to me, and I feel like I'm so out of the loop in terms of information. Like, I'm being honest here. I feel like what we know so little, then nothing would surprise me. Right. Well, fair enough. I mean, as you're hearing this... We probably told you this last week. We're recording a lot of these on the same day, to be quite honest with you. So it is possible, as we're running this, that we're you know we're at a different point here, and we've heard more on Jordan Brown, and we've shared that with you on the board. And if that's the case, that's great. But at the time of the recording, yeah, it's 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 pretty tight. So you get beyond those two. Harry Trotter has gone on scholarship. We're able to report that. Fortunately, I'm happy to do that. So you have him. Do you think Harry Trotter? becomes more likely to be the third guy to get carries than this mix of true freshmen, at least early. Or again, new program for everybody. Is it thrown open and the best guy's going to play? I think it's a clean slate, but I think that Trotter landing a scholarship, especially since I think he has like three years of eligibility left. Uh, two at two, least. Two He's at a junior, least. I think. Yeah. Okay, two. Um they didn't have to do right. that. Right. Um, so I think that would be an indicator that he's earned some level of trust. I think there were a couple of juniors we learned at the same time. I think it was Trotter and Joaquin Gill, and you right. nailed it. The If you're doing it for a senior, it's very meaningful. I'm not trying to dis- diminish the idea of giving a scholarship, but it, you know they're leaving anyway, so it doesn't change your recruiting calendar. But given one, like you said, to Trotter, given one to Joaquin Gill, it changes it. Those are two scholarships you're going to be given out for two years. So you move beyond Harry Trotter, who of course played at Louisville some and transferred in and, and was on the team last year. Let's think about it. You've got Joe Irvin, of course. You've got Thomas Grayson. You've got C.J. Price, assuming he isn't running back. You've got Jarkadia, right? Again, assuming he's at running back, those last two aren't really sure. For me, I've always felt like Joe Irvin, for some reason, feels like the most likely of that group to play, probably because they've had him for the longest and we know he's a running back. Is that still the same for you? What are your thoughts on those young guys and maybe their chances to play? I think Irvin makes the most sense, but I, I do start to wonder if C.J. Price can get on the field too. Um I don't think Wright's going. Jacardi Wright's still not on campus, as far as I know, at this. And again, moment this is time. recorded, and be honest with you guys, it's July thirteenth as we're recording this. So if you're hearing this, I think I have this set for the second Saturday of this series. If you're hearing this, Jacardi Wright may be may be here, and we'll set up yeah. on the board. But and, and, as of reporting this, it still matters because it means he's he'd be quote unquote behind. Yeah, you know, he, everybody he, else. behind it, and, and some of that you know has to do with off field stuff. So um, don't think he's going to play a role. But I think C.J. Price is going to be a running back, and I think I can see him doing some damage um, 
in that in that role fairly fairly early. So to me, if there's a freshman that kind of pokes through and makes an impact, I, I tend to think that Irvin is a good pick, and so is Price. I think it'll be one of those two. If it's Grayson, I'm not going to say I'd be shocked, but you know, if 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 put together a pecking order, I would probably have both Irvin and, and Price ahead of, ahead of Grayson, and that's n- no real tangible information. It's just kind of what it's starting to feel like, and so I would say those two Trotter. And uh, the two graduate transfers are the five that I would have my eye out in terms of guys that'll probably you know log log some carries this year, and I do think it'll be four or five that do log carries. So, um, and and you wonder if one of those two true freshmen, since they do they put Trotter on scholarship and they did add two graduate transfers, you wonder if they can maintain red shirts for all four of those freshmen right. because it would certainly be possible because you could you know maybe stagger it a little bit and give four games to both Irvin and, and then four games to Price. But I don't know if that they want to do that. When you have a four right. four freshman back class, I think you'd want to not stagger uh, games so that they could redshirt. I think you'd almost want to stagger classes. You would want one of them to have a sophomore class, of, at least one of them to have a sophomore classification because I don't think you want four backs in the same class all, all through you know their, their tenure at Kansas State. Um, while it's already, po- uh, you know, a good chance that not all four will remain at Kansas State for the entirety of their college career, you make it even more likely they won't if they maintain the same classification. There's no doubt about that. That's what the numbers do is gives you a lot of, a lot of versatility and choices, right? I mean, I think you're right on both sides. I think, assuming health, all those kind of things, which people will get dinged, we know that. But if guys like Brown, Gilbert, and Trotter stayed healthy. You could absolutely get away with only playing one or two of these backs four games and not burning any red shirts. But you may, like you said, you may just want to. Um, a different topic on running backs. We didn't mention Tyler Burns either, a former scholarship running back um, who left the team, came back under Chris Clements. That's another name to be watching. Uh, you had a really good post on the board you know, earlier this offseason about uh, heights and weights for guys as they came in. Uh, running back, I'm just going to rattle a few off to you because you kind of noted being a little surprised, and I was too, I guess. Like Thomas Grayson, 5'9", 187, not a problem, but I guess I thought he was going to be more a guy who was in that 5'10", 5'11", 200, 205 range, a more traditional back, and really he's not. He's a smaller guy too. Did that surprise you a little bit? Yeah, the fact that I don't think they have a freshman back that weighs 200 pounds unless C.J. Unless Price. Price is it, listed at 202. Yeah. So, so, so Price, and, and to be honest, he looks more than 202. I agree with that, so, yeah. uh, and running back's a little different. Um, if you look at the NFL, I don't know that there's a bunch in the 230 to 240 it's range. It's changing, you're right. It yeah. is It is changing, but I, you know, I think Ezekiel Elliott's probably around 230, 240. Yeah, so you know, uh, the stuff. Guys, so Melvin Gordon's in that 215, 220 range. There's still some, there's still some guys for darn sure you yeah, know, out and there. If, I mean, Todd Gurley's a big back. I mean, from a relatively speaking perspective. If they're 190 now, they'll probably finish yeah. their career at 210. So... Um. Yeah, not a concern, but a little bit of a surprise because I get. I guess well, it's more of a surprise because we're used to a different Kansas State. Right. So just uh, if you haven't looked at the roster, you know Thomas Grayson five nine one eighty seven, Joe Irvin five eight one seventy seven, Clyde Price as he referenced listed just over two hundred pounds at two oh two, also at six foot. You know, maybe it's a situation where he's really 5'10", 5'11", so he looks really thick because he really is two oh two. Uh, Jacardi right, like we said, we don't know. One at the time of this recording, he wasn't on campus yet. Um, also, a guy who could be a linebacker, we don't know, but he is listed at six foot 205. So, a couple sizable guys. So we'll talk about size and move in. You know, well, before we go to recruiting, let's see what we did the last one and kind of look again across the league. Um, again, I'm not going to put you in a spot, especially as we're recording this before Big Full Media Days, where you have to go down and rattle off every team's running backs. I think Phil Steele had K State around fifth or sixth in the Big 12 after adding those backs. Is your general perception that all of a sudden this backfield probably is around the middle of the group, you know, middle of the pack, or is it still towards the bottom for you? I, I would keep it towards the bottom until it's proved to me that these guys are of the right. caliber that they need them to be. Um, I guess Phil Steele's probably he doesn't know anything more than we do necessarily right. so it's a little bit strange for me to see him have it at fifth or sixth so he's really just valuing age and a little bit of experience at their prior stops and he's probably putting most of his focus on grad transfers right interesting on that phil still note he had a, he had a great interview with john kurtz 
on the Faithful to Our Colors podcast at a 610. So if you haven't heard that, go check out that page from, from John Kurtz on his Twitter and listen to that. We had Phil Steele on last year on the KSO show. He knows what he's talking about. The point I'm getting to is I think he had the offensive line for K-State ninth in the Big 12, which surprised me a little bit. We'll get to O-line later. Uh, but to have the O-line so low with you know three starters back, four guys who played a lot, and the running backs relatively high, you know, fifth with – nobody back who's played at k-state is surprising but i mean it may say something about you know the talent in the league throughout the position i'm more with you i would put it more towards more towards the bottom i think now yeah if you're ranking the position groups on what they're going to produce then i'd yeah i'd bump k-state towards the middle because they're going to run it so much those guys are going to have better looking numbers perhaps that's what he's doing maybe that's what he's doing than a lot of players in the league but But from a pure ability perspective i couldn't have them yeah it's much higher than seventh or eighth probably it's weird if he has them if he has them there on production, but then didn't bring the offensive line with it. And right. maybe he's got some super secret we don't he know about. He might be a pretty smart guy, you know. So let's take a step back and look at big picture from a roster perspective. You laid it out earlier. You got two grad transfers, a senior. You got a, se- a junior and Harry Trotter. And then you got four true freshmen, if we're counting right, as a running back. So seven at the position on scholarship. You're going to lose two. They've already got two committed, D.Y., uh, Chris Vaughn and Keon Mosey. I know you've seen Mosey in person. Have you seen Vaughn in person this year, too? Flando did. Flando, not, not, yeah. not, he wasn't performing. Oh, you're right. He was at the camp in Manhattan, didn't perform. But anyway, so we're talking about size. And I'm not jumping off you know, a ledge or saying, oh, my gosh, this, this staff's only going to recruit small backs because they're not. It's just who they've kind of signed so far. But talk about those two, two more backs. They don't have a ton of size in Chris Vaughn and Keon Mosey but I think they're probably versatile uh, and they bring some speed and quickness for sure. Yeah, and I think that there's probably going to be a little bit different plans for them. I think they're going to be kind of the hybrid rule. I'm not saying they are Darius Shepard, but Shepard was probably more a receiver that played in the backfield. There are probably more running backs that are going to also play a wide receiver. They're, they're both very similar. I, I just think one's more north-south and one's more elusive. And uh, the the east west kind of way, and 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 uh, I mean Mosey ran a four three eight at the Lindenwood Combine, and and I bet Deuce Vaughn can probably do something similar to that. I don't think he has four three speed. Mosey's a little bit more north south. Vaughn can really make a mess. So uh, both hybrid types, but different types of right. hybrids. <laughs> no, I agree with that too. From and I haven't seen him as much as you have. I've just seen the highlights and that kind of stuff. But yeah, I think. It's interesting because people are going to look at them. They're going to look at the size and say, "Oh, scat back, same thing." But I don't. I agree. I don't think they're the same. The same either. A lot more quickness, you know, from Deuce, Chris Vaughn and and then straight lines. Not that they other. Not that they can't do the other thing, but yeah, they're not the same. They're not the same. Their back. specialties are different, right? Yep. So you, we mentioned seven backs on scholarship goes down to five with graduations next year. Back up to seven. You add those two in from your talk, and I think you believe, at least I do too, without putting words in your mouth. I think they would take another particularly if it's a good back and maybe somebody who offers something different. Yeah, they, they if they add another one, it'll be a more traditional one, and it's got to be one that they really, really value. They're not going to reach for a third, but they'll have their eyes out for a third. What's crazy, and I don't think this is going to happen because I think, like you said earlier, they'll probably stagger some classes and be be smart about it. But if they don't, you know, if they, if they redshirt all four of those freshmen, you know, at running back, and then they sign three more, you know, they would have seven freshmen running back running backs on next season of roster which is a lot better than you know the, the zero they inherited uh right right now do you think do you think the running back roster we're going to wrap this up in a little bit again we're talking running backs 2019 season preview edition part two of the kso show brought to you uh by Tallgrass tap house i sincerely appreciate them and all they do for us do you think this i know i know they're not going to want to have two seniors and four freshmen and a junior i know that but i mean from maybe a, a difference in ability you know do you think this is what the running back roster will look like from a size scholarship number, not class distribution, but let me re-ask it. What would they want to do differently? Like if they could come in and, and say, boy, we wish we had this, this, and this, what do you think they'd want at running back? Roughly how many scholarships, kind of how maybe we would distribute the class, body types, just talk me through it. What do you think they would want at that position long-term going forward? Probably seven or eight, which is, they got seven now, I think. Yeah, Correct. they got seven now, and I think seven or eight's the number because they're going to want to play four. Or maybe five. So seven or eight is a good number for them in terms of especially since they're going to use running backs on special teams even more. Um, So I think that's the number. And I think in a a perfect world, all of them, they get a little bit of everything. If they they, they want a little bit of a more traditional back that would probably be the bell cow back 
you know, 10 years ago, they'll have that. Um, I think they kind of had that in that Bruce Anderson right. at North Dakota State was a little bit more of the heavier power guy. So maybe one or two of those, one or two of the Keon Mosey types, you know, one or two of the Thomas Grayson's. I mean, they, I don't think that they want to pigeonhole themselves. I think they want to have a a treasure trove of weapons and whatever tool they want, they know where to get. It's going to be as fascinating as probably any position on the roster to watch going forward because of all you just talked about and the versatility they're going to look for and just how differently they're going to use that position. You know, mm-hmm. we, we talk all the time about running back in today's football not being as valuable because of how it's used, and that's accurate. But with uh, the offense is going to really focus on the traditional running game. It's going to be fascinating to see. I think that pretty much covers running backs for this edition of the KSO Show as part of your 2019 preview. We're going to come back probably a week or so from today. We're going to talk fullbacks and tight ends, which used to sound kind of boring, like fullbacks and tight ends. But, Derek, those would be big parts of this offense. It's uh, outside quarterback. I've been told, and I can understand it, the tight end is the most difficult position on this team to learn. Well, it makes sense. They're going to be asked to do a lot. We're going to come back and talk about them. Thank you for listening. Please tell your friends.